the cure to the disease of sin. But if you don't follow the doctor's orders, you're liable to lose your life. Yes. If you don't follow God, you'll be lost. You know what? God has specific ordinances from the beginning. From the beginning. Listen to, listen to how many details God gives just for burning incense unto him. In Exodus chapter 30 and verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. This is just for burning incense. Not, not, to, not for sacri the sacrifices that they had to make. Not for the, the priests. Uh, the priestly ordinances, not for all these other things that they had to do under the old law. Listen to how specific the details that, that God gives in order to worship him with incense. This is what he said. He said, thou shalt, and thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon, of shittim wood, and shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four squares shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make it unto a crown of gold round about, and two golden rings thou shalt make to it, and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. Burn incense upon it. That's a lot of directions. Yes, it is. Well, That's a lot of directions. And, and, I, and I can't imagine that they would have went unpunished if they didn't follow one of those directions. Just one. And look, let's look at an example of men who didn't do it how God said to do it. Listen, you know those specific instructions? Yeah, in several. Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 1, okay. there was a couple of, of, of guys that decided to burn incense, not how God told them to do it. Oh boy. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons oh, yeah. of Aaron, oh, yeah. took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Okay. What? <laughs> you mean to tell me these men Trying to go and, and worship God, they're doing a good thing. Right. They were. They wanted. They wanted to, to worship God. They could have just kept walking, but they decided to go and worship God. But because they didn't do it exactly like God said to do it, they got devoured by fire. You know, God. God made this example for us. For, for us to know that he's not playing. When God says something, he means it. When God says something, he means it. He loves us. And he loves us more than anybody can even comprehend. But when God says something, he means it. We ought to do what God said. You know, people are doing this today. They're doing the same thing. God told them to do worship in a certain way, according to his word. But they're doing the same thing that Nadab and Abihu did. There's nothing new under the sun. The same mistakes people make today are the same mistakes people made in the days of old. Yes. You know, the Bible will never be outdated. That's right. Because of this truth, there's nothing new under the sun. And listen to, listen to an example of this in Matthew 15, 6. It says, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made, listen to this, thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Well, we do it this way. We like to do it this way. Well, well what did God tell you to do? They made the commandment of God of none effect by their tradition. It says, ye hypocrites. Yeah. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, their mouth. and honoreth me with their lips. Yeah. Oh, listen to this. But their heart is far from me. That's right. Why? They're not doing it how God said to do it. Listen to what he said. He says, But 
in vain. That's right. They do worship me. Why? What? Man, are you mean to tell me there's people that worship God in vain? Yes, right now. What? Right now. Amen. Why? Why? Why do they? Why does that? People spend their whole life worshiping God, and you telling me that some of them could be doing it in vain? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm right, my friend. Why is that? It says, this is why. It says, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We're going to do it how we want to do it. We're going to do it how, how what, the way that makes us feel good. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. God has commanded us to worship him like he said to worship him. God is a spirit, so, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is how you worship God. What does that mean, in spirit and in truth? In spirit means with your effort, with your mind, with all your mind, with all your effort. And, and in truth, meaning how he said to do it in his word. Jesus says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Worship him in spirit and in truth. His word is truth. Spirit means effort, all your effort, how he said it in his word. It's true. You know what? God has also given us specific instructions on how to be saved. And there's 5,000 different ways, right? Right there. Yes, it is. 5,000 different. This church says you can, you can be saved this way. This church says you can be saved this way. Well, I have a question for you. What did God what say? Did, what did God say? What did God say? Now, I want you to, I want you to look at these scriptures. So these are the last few scriptures. And then we're going to go eat, all right? Okay. Amen. Look at these. And these are a lot of the scriptures that people use in order to say that you ought to be saved this way, or you ought to be saved that way. So, in John chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There's that word saved. So, is belief the only thing that saves you? No. Let's look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wait a minute. There's that word saved again. There. Is calling upon the name of the Lord the only thing that saves you? No. Is that the only thing you have to do? Wait a minute. The, the Bible can't contradict itself. Why is it saying, if you believe you could be saved? And now over here it's saying, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Well, let's look at some more scripture. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 41, it says, And devils came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Hold on a second. We just read in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wait a minute. These devils just called the name of the Lord. So, um, wait a minute. We're going to have devils in heaven? No. no. <laughs> in James chapter 2 and verse 19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. James 2.19. Every day. So is it is calling upon the name of the Lord the only thing that saves us? I'll let you answer that for yourself. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, For grace, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So is is it grace through faith alone that saves us? In James chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, dead. being alone. So, is it grace by faith that saves us alone? What about confessing? Is confession 
Does confession save us alone? In Romans 10 verse 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Is it confession alone that saves us? No. It says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's that word again. Yeah. Salvation. Is saved. Yeah. So does that mean that this is the only thing that I have to do to be saved? See, this is what churches do. They pick this, and they say, this is all you have to do. And they pick another one, and they say, this is all you have to do. Let's look at some more. And Jesus said this in Mark 16, 16. It says, yeah. he that yeah. believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Is it just baptism that saves us? No. All of these scriptures say to do different things that include salvation. So are those the only things that we have to do to be saved? Let's look at some more. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 21 it says, The like figure where unto even baptism doth also now save us. It says baptism saves you. So is that the only thing that I need to do to be saved? Church, listen, all of these things are necessary for salvation. Yes, they is. All of these things are necessary for salvation. You have to hear Romans chapter 10, 17. You have to believe John 3, 16. You have to repent Luke 13, 3. You have to confess. We just read that in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And you have to be baptized. Yes. Mark 16, 16. Yes. All of those verses said salvation. But what happens is people take one and say, you just got to do this. Take one, you just got to do that. No. You have to do all of them. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, and you will be saved. Think about it like this. What if the doctor says, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be healthier, you really need to exercise. Is exercise the only thing that will make you healthier? Uh -huh. And then and then you go to the dentist and he says, you need to floss. You need to brush your teeth twice a day for three minutes, and then you'll be healthier. Is that the only thing that you need to do to be healthier? No. no. And then somebody else says, you know, well, if you want to be healthier, you gotta just you gotta stop smoking. Like, I heard that before too. Is is stopping stopping smoking the only thing that will make you healthier? No, you need to do all of them. You need to brush your teeth and floss. You need to have a healthy diet. You need to exercise. You need to not do drugs. You need to drink water. You need to do all of those things. There was a list. When it, when it says do this and you'll be saved, 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 that means you need to do all of them. That's what that means. All of these things, all of these things together, only, only, only all these things combined will make you say, and you know what, my friends, we have, we have been divided and conquered. We have been divided and conquered. One church says to do this, and one church says to do that. But what does the Bible say? It shows you. You know, we've done what God's word has told us specifically not to do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of Jesus Christ, I beg you, please, please, it says, that ye all speak the same thing. Same thing. Are we speaking the same thing today? Absolutely no, not. Absolutely. This one says this. This one says that. This one says this. What does the Bible say? I was right. I'll tell you what it says. Continuing on in that verse, it says, and that there be no divisions among you. That there be no divisions among you. Come on now. We know that there's divisions today. Right now, right here. There's divisions today. There's 20 different congregate, 20 different denominations on one street. Right now, somewhere else. What if we all came together? Yes. What if we all came together and spoke the same thing and spoke what the Bible said? Imagine how better our yes. communities would be. Yes. 
if we all came together and worked together instead of separating. It says, for continuing in 1 Corinthians, it says, For it hath been declared unto you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul. This is what people are saying today. I am of Paul, and I am of, of, of Apollos, and I of Cephas. No, no, it's no judgment right now, but people say, I am Baptist, and yes. I am Pentecostal, yes. and I am Catholic, and yes. I am this, and I yes. am that. Yes. How would you be just a Christian? Christian, that's beautiful. Good teaching, brother. It says, listen to this. It says, is Christ divided? No, it's not. No. no. It says, was Paul crucified for you? No. No. No divisions. Among, we were never supposed to be divided. That's right. We were never, ever That's supposed right. to be divided. That's right. We were all supposed to be one in Christ. Yes. Listen to these last scriptures carefully. Okay. And, and then we can go eat. Okay. Promise. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27, it says, Now ye are the body of Christ. Right. Now remember, Paul asked the question. He said, Is Christ divided? No. No. Christ is not divided. It says, you are a body of Christ and members in particular. All the people that abide in the doctrine of Christ are in Christ in one body. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, and hath put all things under his feet, talking about Jesus, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Listen to this. Which is his body. Yes. This is important. Yes, it is. The body of is the church. Those translations in Greek both translate to the word church. Yes. When, they, when they use body, when they use church, those two words are the same exact word, which means church. Yes. Now going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27, now ye are the body of Christ. Listen to this. That word body means church. Now ye are the church of Christ. That's clear, brother. That's clear. That is why. Lord have mercy. That's, that name is on the sign. That is why that name is on the sign. Because that's what Paul called the church in Corinth. That's what Paul called the original church that Christ built. That's why we have the name Church of Christ. And because we're married to Christ, we put on Christ's name. The Church of Christ. And Colossians chapter 1 and verse 24 didn't just say it in one place in case you don't believe it. Okay. It says, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. That's Bible. Read it yourself. The body is the church. Every day. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 12, in the same chapter, it says, For as the body is one, what does body mean again? Church. church. As the church is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, all the members of that one church, being many, are one church. One body. Clear. It says, so also is Christ. Is Christ divided? No. no. Our one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized. baptized. Yes. Help me somebody. Baptized. Yes. Wait, I thought you had to say the sinner's prayer. You're baptized into one body. You're baptized into Christ. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, all have been all made to drink into one spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, listen to this. This is the key. It's very simple. We know that body means church. Yes. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, there is one body. There is one church. We are all supposed to be of one accord. Yes. There is one church and one spirit, yes. even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one, Lord. one, faith. one faith. Oh, this is the word somebody's scared of. One baptism. One baptism. One, right. 
one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Remember I told you that we're married to Christ and that's what we put on his name. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 it says, For the husband yes. is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. It is a marriage relationship. That's what we put on his name. He gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Listen to this again. And with the washing of water. What is he talking about? Baptism. Baptism. That's right. By the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. There is but one church in the Bible. That's right. That's right. There's only one church in the Bible. That's right. And in the last scripture, um, before we go into Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And look at, and go down to verse 47. That's it. it. says, That's Praising it. God. That's it. And having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That's right. What the church is, is the people that abide in the doctrine of Christ. And, and first, in uh, Second John, uh, the, in verse 10, about verse 10, it says, if you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, you do not have God. You have to abide in his doctrine. You have to become a member of the Church of Christ. And I told you how. All the verses that I read where it talked about being saved in salvation, you have to hear, believe, repent, Confess and be baptized, immersed, fully immersed in the blood of Jesus will meet you in the water and wash your sins away. It is an operation of God. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27, it says, We that have been baptized have put on Christ. When you're baptized, you put on Christ. And after you're baptized, after you follow all five of those steps, your name will be added to the book of life. And when judgment day comes, you won't have to worry. If there's anybody that's subject to this call, don't hesitate. Come today. Because tomorrow is not promised. And the way that this virus is spreading, I feel that even stronger today, that tomorrow may not be promised. Don't wait. Come and be saved today. All together, we stand safe. 605. Just as I am with you, I want to see.